Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Dave here, and this is going to be a two-part video. I'm real excited to bring it to you. It's going to be rebuilding the Arduino control. So in part one, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I rebuilt my entire control box. Going from what was a sketchy setup to a little bit more permanent setup. A couple more fans. I, and uh, I've got a, a fan blowing on one side of the Arduinos and another fan blowing this way. And in part two of the video, we're going to be going over the sketch for the Arduino that controls these two or these three IBT controllers. Hey, Papa. You ready? Well, let's get to it. Well, welcome to the workshop. So, in order to kind of get this thing to work the way I want it without any loose connections. I'm going to take this particular Arduino Uno R3. I mounted three of these IBT controllers in this little um, plastic case. They used to have a uh, fishing um, depth detector in it. So I just uh, cut these little things out. We're going to put a fan on here and... Um, That'll, that'll keep this a little bit cooler. So they're just mounted in there and this particular power um, connector. So because there's a lot of connections on the Arduino that go to power and ground, I'm gonna use this separate uh, little power strip. I'm gonna solder everything to this and then solder everything to the Arduino. So the best place that I figured out to uh, mount it is in this corner so that I have access. It's Once I run all the wires to it, I can easily just uh, secure it. And the Arduino, I'm just gonna mount it right here so I have plenty of room to work around it. Um, so these project boards, they're tinned on, I got this whole set of different sizes for like 10 bucks on um, Amazon. I'll put a link in there. Um, also, the power connectors. So I need, I need eight of them because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then power and ground. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then power and ground. So this should work out pretty good. You just put the wires in it, and then I can run all the power wires and all the connections to the IBTs without, um, and then, it, then they don't have to move around anymore. So this is pretty important. You want to go to xsimulator.net and download and print out the guide to hooking this up. Now, I've linked it in the description. Basically, this shows you all the connections on the Arduino. And this other one shows those connections along with how to hook it up to the IBT tubes. Um, so we're going to want to follow along with this. So in order to connect the motors which are the inputs of the motors are actually going to come through the side here to uh, connect the motors to the IBTs. I'm going to be using this uh, 16 gauge wire. And uh, so I need to tin the ends and then secure them down. So when you're soldering, you want to make sure your the tip is clean and uh, warmed up. Get a little bit of this to uh, transfer some heat on it. We heat up the wire. And there it is. Tinned. Okay, so the first step was to run the motors. Um, so I, I ran them to the, the motor section of the IBT. Um, so when you tell how, how a wire is, what gauge it is, this is 16 right here. So the motors come equipped with 16 coming out the lead, so I figured that'd be the same as using that. So I got one to each motor. So when I come in the side, I can just connect up one, two, three motors. Now I just need to run uh, power and power and ground to each of these. Okay, now the hard part is done, at least for me. So our green will fit right in there. Just getting these uh, the power and ground. So I I, I tripled the wires um, because I mean coming in here with a little bit bigger gauge wire right from the battery. Um, but each of the uh, IBT twos will need power and ground so i did label them on this one power and ground so they're all the same so next thing you need to do 
is uh, get uh, power separated on this from the Arduino. So that that was the most difficult part for me, these bigger connections. The uh, easy ones, well, we'll see how it is. It may not be easy at all. Now, because there's a lot of common connections between um, power and ground, like right here. Um, so all these different ones that are hooked to the uh, potentiometers or um, the Hall effect pot potentiometers. There's a lot of different uh, powers, a lot of different grounds. And rather than confusing it here, um, we're just going to connect them all in this particular little board. And um, what we're going to be using is telephone gauge wire. It's uh, number 26 or 28, depending on what you get. And what I do with my power and grounds is I use this uh, for power. I use the orange and green for ground. And then I'll use the various colors, the other colors, the stripe colors for um, different connections um, within the pattern. Also, one thing that's important, use a highlighter. So when we make a connection, like from here to there, I'm going to highlight that with a highlighter. That way um, you know what you've done and um, you don't have a problem um, because you, you, you can tra track what you've done. One thing you want to be careful of, you don't want to nick the wire with uh, if you're going to be using like spikes or something to, to cut it with. You want to make sure that you don't nick it. So I'm going to be using this stripper. It seems to work pretty good. And if I bend it back and forth, it's not, it's not nicked at all. But those will cause you problems if uh, if it breaks. It'll be hard to find where it broke. And but anyway, all right. So to make the common uh, power connection on this, I'm just I stripped off a length of the wire, and it really doesn't matter where you put it because we're only going to have two of these. I think I'm just going to put it in there, and I'll bend this other side over and solder it down here. And that will provide a nice power rail that we can connect others to. All right, so real easy. Just want to make sure the tip is clean. And we're just going to solder it right here. So that's all we need. But now we have both power and ground. So we have, we can make tons of different connections and should make the uh, following the schematic or at least all these multiple connections should be pretty easy to do with what we got with this board and we don't need all the board but this is a nice little size and uh, so that's what I'm going to use okay so the first thing we want to do is hook up the 5 volt coming off the Arduino and ground and we're going to hook it to that card so what we're talking about is these two particular wires now, um, what I've done is I've placed this, the little control board over here. I've cut these to the right length. And I'm just going to go ahead and solder them onto the bottom of the Arduino. All right, so the first connection is going to be power and ground. So you find the 5 volts, that's going to be power. Find the ground, it's going to be ground. We're going to go ahead and flip this over and just solder it right here. Uh, one thing... Um, you're going to want to make sure that your Arduino board is clean. So I went over it with a little bit of acetone just to clean off the edges um, where I'm going to be soldering. So, so it makes a nice clean connection. So now let's, let's mark those on here and uh, go on to the next part. So it may seem simplistic, but we're going to go ahead and we did this particular red wire all the way to there. And we did this particular ground wire all the way to here. So if you keep track this way, the things shouldn't get too confusing. I'm not going to go over soldering everything on here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump forward just a little bit. But uh, just follow it one wire at a time and you won't get lost. So to speed up the process of connecting things to the IBT2s, I found these little uh, computer connections and uh, basically soldered some wires on the end. Now, 
it's important that you have uh, at least a way to uh, check continuity so you can tell which wire is which. Right now I forget because I just took it off the rig, but I know I can use them and they worked before. So I'm just gonna have to tone them, tone them out. I know that uh, orange is gonna be power for me. And green is gonna be ground. The other two are control wires of some sort. So I'm gonna be connecting them just like this. And so I've got one more. And then I don't have another one of those connectors, so I'm gonna have to use the servo connectors on these. All right, so things are looking pretty good. I got both of these connectors and just happened to be lucky enough to find this old sound card connector. Um, so this is exactly what I need uh, to run the, the uh, traction loss motor. So I'm just going to clip it off um, and individually uh, tin each wire and should be ready to go. All right, so before I put the heat shrink on this, uh, pin one is the one with the red mark and this is how I do it. So I got pin one It's actually going to the orange and white pin two Going to the blue with the white stripe Pin three and four are tied together and they go to green and white or white and green and uh, Then we skip two of them skip two of them That's five and six so seven power and eight is ground and these uh, nine and ten we don't need those so i'm going to clip these off and put a heat shrink over the the whole thing and then we'll go ahead and solder it up um, to the arduino and the ibt um, connections are going to be right here all right so the final thing is to hook up the pot motors um, so A0 is one, green, white, blue, white, and on A2, which is the last one that we just hooked up, orange and white. All right, guys. So we are just about ready to start hooking up the Hall Effect potentiometers and the, uh, the power and the motors. So all this is secured. I, you know, I went ahead and double checked everything. So we have these these are both these are power and ground for each of the uh, three potentiometers and each of those i have a uh, control and each of these are right here on a0 um a1 and a2 so i mean it seems like a lot of wires and it i guess it is but uh we do have a lot going on it's three different uh three different emotions too so I'm going to go ahead and solder these things on the potentiometers. I'm going to have to take this, the unit, um, drill out some holes to add the, the motor wires right here and for power and ground. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drill out the, those holes. Also going to drill it wide enough so that I could fit the USB in. And we're going to hook this up. Well, she's coming along. Um, I'm hooking up the Hall Effect potentiometers. So... The green wire is ground. The red is five volts. And the black wire, that's the uh, control wire. So all of these are gonna be the same. And uh, if you are, if you're gonna try a project like this, you, know, you may wanna get one of these helping hand things um, it's just a couple of alligator clips. Helps you hold the wires when you're soldering them. These little wires, just a little too hard to do without it. All right, so the next thing, we gotta find out what COM port the Arduino is on. We'll plug it in. You should get uh, two solid lights after a while, like right there. Well, all right, I think we're done with part one. That's all the uh, soldering and the wiring and stuff like that. Um, join me next week. Hopefully I can get this out um, where we're gonna go over and get this rig running on uh, part two. Dave out.